A major fast food chain is hiding a dark secret, and several TikTokers are exposing them in videos that have gone massively viral. And one employee got fired for it. Brit apparently contacted my manager about the video. And the problem is much bigger than we think. We did our research and got to the bottom of how we got here and how we can fix it. We have a full kettle and it's about to spill. Imagine going into your favorite coffee shop to get your regular drink and snack to start your day right. Or you pop into a local chain to get a midday pick-me-up. There's a vast array of baked goods on display, all ready for the taking. Your mouth is watering, and you find the perfect treat to get you through the day. But have you ever thought about what happens to the ones that aren't eaten by the end of the day? Several Dunkin' Donuts employees on TikTok have exposed what really happens to the uneaten food at the end of the day, and it's not exactly appetizing. Kathleen Diaz and Martina Catalanado went viral with their videos showing themselves throwing out rows of perfectly good donuts at the end of the day. Their videos got hundreds of thousands of views. Lorianne gave people a tip in the caption of her video. Yo, get yourself free donuts before Duncan closes, otherwise they get thrown away. In her caption, Lauren wrote, The fact that we can't donate anymore is insane. My coworker made a ton of extra donuts for no reason. One TikToker, Brian Johnson, made a series of viral videos about this very issue. In one video, he explained his closing routine. We throw out so much food at the end of the day. My name is Brian and I'll show you my closing routine at Dunkin'. I start by dumping all these donuts. I do get to bring some home if I want to, but this is just the routine I have to follow. So many much kids. I then dump all the hot coffee, drain them out of the pots, then the large containers of green tea, sweet tea, iced coffee, iced tea cap, dump all of them into the sink. A lot. I really wish we could donate some of this food to someone, but some of this food has been sitting out all day. These big ones are hard and still, so we have to them. He posted another video of himself throwing out baked goods with the caption, Every night, 312 donuts plus munchkins. In another video, he wrote, Every night at Dunkin', not including the 40 bagels, too. One person asked Brian, Could you donate it to a homeless shelter or something? He responded, So we basically, we technically could, but we can't take them in our boxes. We would have to give it to them in like a giant trash bag, which is, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of, I don't want to say rude, but like, I feel like it's kind of weird just showing up to a homeless shelter with like a trash bag. I mean, it is like, it is nice and but I, I don't have my license so I can't like do it every day and it's like I don't know they don't want you to do it like so much because then like they start expecting it and which is kind of annoying because I feel like they definitely should do something about it because it's so much waste and it's like come on it's 2021 we should definitely like I don't know be doing something about throwing away sometimes 400 donuts it's like and like bagel, bagels too and like bacon and like like everything at the end of the day. So it's like, I don't know. But in a follow-up TikTok and a YouTube video, he showed himself giving donuts to the homeless and to healthcare workers. Then Brian posted a shocking update. Then today when I got to work, this happened. I got fired because corporate apparently contacted my manager about the video and she went and fired me. I made videos of giving it to the firemen and the homeless pretty sure that's what got me fired. Clearly Duncan doesn't want people to see that they're throwing away that many donuts because just because they, just, they don't want to pay people to give them to homeless. When these TikToks started going viral, people were outraged. My respects for Duncan Donuts. It should be illegal. This was painful to watch. Duncan, change this. Duncan, do better. Many people said Duncan should donate whatever was left over. Only me who got a pain in my heart when I saw this? Why don't you give it to someone who has needs? Are you kidding me? They could donate to homeless people. They need to donate or something. No, all them donuts. Y'all could at least give them away to people who don't have food. Come on, Duncan. Dang, at least give the homeless some and not waste them all. Bruh, give to the homeless or something, damn. Billie Eilish was also upset when she saw the food waste. She posted one of Brian's videos to her Instagram story and wrote, Hi, can restaurants please stop doing this? 
One person said they asked their local Dunkins about donating food. I asked at my local Duncan, and they always say they are not allowed to give. They told us to talk to the manager if we have a problem. Another person said Duncan employees should feel ashamed. Any person works at Duncan, I'm pretty sure he or she is not feeling guilty about this. Girl, how can you sleep after this? Kathleen Diaz responded to people criticizing her for throwing food out. You guys don't realize that literally everywhere that sells food, at the end of the day, has to throw away foods that aren't consumed and of a low durability as a donut. You guys only judge the employees, but don't understand that I'm not supposed to every day after my job at 10 p.m. go out and give food to homeless people. This is just my job. Don't choose to throw food away, but I have to do this. I agree that the owners of the food companies should reduce waste, but that is unfortunately not in my control. Besides that, you can make a homeless feel sick or even die by giving them old food. So, what's the big issue? How much food is wasted in North America, and why food is wasted in the first place? Food waste is a huge problem in North America. According to the RTS Food Waste in America in 2021 guide, food takes up more space in U.S. landfills than anything else. The United States discards more food than any other country in the world, nearly 40 million tons, or 80 billion pounds, every year. That's estimated to be 30 to 40 percent of the entire U.S. food supply, and equates to 219 pounds of waste per person. In Canada, nearly 2.2 million tons of edible food is wasted each year. Avoidable food waste costs the average Canadian household around $1,100 every year, and as much as 50% of food waste is avoidable. Food waste has been growing over the years. In the United States, food waste has been steadily growing per capita by about 50% since 1974. And this problem isn't limited to North America. Globally, people waste 1.4 billion tons of food every year. It's hard to imagine all this food waste happening in countries that have high numbers of food insecure households. So, how did we get here? The answer is complicated, and it involves a lot of different factors at every level of food production and consumption. Let's take a look at companies like supermarkets, restaurants, and fast food chains like Dunkin' Donuts. When you go to a grocery store or a restaurant with a food display, you usually see an abundance of food ready for the taking, but not all of that food is purchased by customers. In a 2016 CBC Marketplace investigation, journalist David Common went to a Walmart just outside Toronto, Ontario, Canada over a dozen times and found several bins full of food that still looked good enough to eat. Several items appeared to be tossed before their best before date. One bag of frozen cherries was labeled with a best before date in 2018. When checking out a different Walmart's bins, CBC found similar results. Bins full of seemingly good food. At one point, David Common ate a blueberry from a pack found in the garbage and said it still tastes good. And as we saw in the TikToks from Dunkin' Donuts employees, several rows of donuts, bagels, and more were being thrown out at the end of the day. But why do stores overstock their shelves? There are a few reasons depending on the store. For items prepared in-house, like baked goods in a supermarket or fast food chain or meals in a restaurant, it's difficult to know how much to prepare. Karen Paik, the manager of Bread Lounge in Los Angeles, told food journalism site The Counter, It's really difficult to gauge how many items to make. We never know who's going to come and buy out the whole store one week. And if they don't come the next week, then we made all this extra stuff. While fine dining establishments can have more control over their food waste, there are still leftovers at the end of every day. But another reason why stores and chains want to have plenty of food on all their shelves is because of our buying habits. Imagine yourself walking into a bakery and only seeing one donut on the shelf. Would you buy it or would you leave it? Many people will not buy the last item on a shelf, even when it's perfectly good to eat. In the documentary Just Eat It, farmer Delaney Zayek explained why that happens. If this is what I had and there was an hour left, that one bunch of chard would just sit there and no one would buy it. But if I had 30 bunches of chard all bursting out, I'd probably sell 25 bunches of chard. So what does that say? People are totally impulse shopping, and if they think there is one that is left, there is something wrong with it. So, food establishments will overstock their shelves in order to encourage more customers to buy more items. But when there's food left over, it's often thrown away. A common explanation for why food establishments throw out old food is business could get sued if someone gets sick from eating it. But this isn't entirely true. 
In fact, as of 2015, there has not been a single legal case that involved food donation-related liability, meaning no one has been sued over eating donated food. And that's thanks to the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Act, which protects a person or organization that donates food to a food bank in good faith from liability. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, in order to receive protection under the act, a person or gleaner must donate in good faith apparently wholesome food or apparently fit grocery products to a nonprofit organization for ultimate distribution to needy individuals. It does not cover direct donations to needy individuals or families. The act also provides protection against civil and criminal liability to the nonprofit organizations that receive such donated items in good faith. So, as long as the person or group is donating seemingly good food that meets all federal, state, and local laws to a food bank or similar organization, and not directly to an individual or family, they are not held legally responsible. A person or group can even give food that doesn't meet quality and labeling standards and still receive protection. The act also extends liability protections to donors of food and grocery products who do not meet all quality and labeling standards if the donor informs the nonprofit organization that receives the items, the nonprofit organization agrees to recondition the items to meet all quality and labeling standards, and the nonprofit organization is knowledgeable of the standards to do so properly. However, just because donating leftover food that is still edible is protected under United States law doesn't mean it's financially feasible for every business, especially small ones. Packing up and delivering the food isn't free, and spending time and resources doing something that won't offer any financial return can be a strain on businesses, especially when it's done often. While larger C-suite corporations, like Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's, can take a tax deduction on food donations up until recently, smaller businesses were not guaranteed that same tax break. Between 2005 and December 2015, an expanded version of the tax break was renewed each year that allowed smaller businesses to claim a tax deduction on food donations. But because it was renewed at the end of every year, businesses couldn't rely on the credit, meaning they didn't know how much of their food they could afford to donate. However, in the omnibus spending bill passed in December 2015, that expanded tax credit was made permanent, allowing businesses of all sizes to make food donations without worrying about financial loss. So what does this all mean for Dunkin' Donuts? It's a C-suite major corporation, meaning they have always qualified for the tax break. And thanks to the Good Samaritan Act we already discussed, Duncan would be covered if they donated to a food bank or similar organization. But food banks may not always want donuts and bagels, and donuts aren't known for their long shelf life. According to Feeding America, food banks typically do not want items needing refrigeration, leftovers, baked goods. It's unclear if these guidelines apply to a business like Dunkin' Donuts or if they are just intended for private individuals, but it would be understandable if some food banks didn't want leftover baked goods that may have gotten stale from sitting out all day. If you want businesses like Dunkin' Donuts to reconsider their policies around food donation, reach out to the companies directly and let them know what you think. You can also reach out to local franchises of fast food chains who may be able to connect with a local food bank and donate leftover food that way and other chains have shown food donation is possible. Panera Bread has a program called End of Day Donation, which allows local Panera Bread franchises to donate unsold food to a local food bank on a regular basis. But what can we do as individuals to address the bigger problem of food waste? Aside from donating appropriate food or money to your local food bank, you can also be mindful of what you're buying at the grocery store, either by carefully planning and sticking to a grocery list for weekly shopping trips, or by doing more frequent, smaller trips to ensure you're only buying what you need. As well, you should learn the meaning behind the dates on your food. Over 80% of Americans throw out edible food because they misunderstood the date labels. Part of the problem is, with the exception of baby formula, the federal government does not require food manufacturers to label their food with expiration dates, and there's no uniform standard standard for what the dates on food should mean. Plus, every state has their own rules, or no rules at all. Instead, dates like best before or sell by often refer to when the manufacturer guesses the food is at its best quality or will taste the freshest. So how can you determine if food is safe to eat? The United States Department of Agriculture recommends checking your food for signs of going bad. If it seems fine, it's probably safe to eat. 
Food waste is a huge problem in North America, and seeing a large corporation like Dunkin' Donuts throw out large amounts of seemingly good food can understandably make people upset. And the problem becomes more urgent when you consider the environmental impact of food waste. The Garbage Queen, a scientist who specializes in landfills, made a TikTok addressing Duncan's waste and explained why it was an environmental issue. Food waste is the number one source of organic waste in landfills. And when organic waste starts to break down in landfills, it produces methane. Which if you don't know, methane is a greenhouse gas that is 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So it's vital that we keep organics out of landfills. This is a problem we have the means to solve at every level, from massive corporations to private individuals. If we all rethink the way we produce, shop for, and consume food, we can chip away at our food waste crisis, one person at a time. What do you think about this story? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button. To keep up on all the tea, consider subscribing to the channel.